good morning students today in this session i am going to continue with your poem the gift of india by sarojini naidu in the previous session i have discussed with you the summary of the poem with its background and other essential topic and today in this session i will be discussing with you the explanation of the poem with literary devices before starting the session children i would like to mention that you have to revise the poem thoroughly so that you can quote the lines in your answer before starting the session let us see the objectives of this session by the end of this poem you will be able to understand the poem with its detailed analysis you will be able to explain meanings of difficult words as used in the context of the poem you will be able to identify and understand literary devices used in the poem now let us discuss the word meanings of the poem children while seeing your poem you might have noticed that there are no stanzas in the poem the poem is a 24 lines poem without any stanza division each line rhymes with its next line so the rhyme scheme comes out to be a a b b c c the poet has used no stanzas in the poem to gain the attention of the reader now in our first stanza i have taken lines 1 till 6 now let us see its word meaning the meaning of first word ought is nothing withhold to hold something back raiment clothing garments rich gifts of raiment or grain or gold here refers to india's richness in material resources lo it is an expression used to call attention to something flung thrown or pushed in a sudden and forceful way east and the west east refers to the eastern countries such as persia west refers to the countries such as france and flanders flanders is the previous name of belgium priceless treasures here refer to the indian soldiers who sacrificed their lives during the first world war yielded means produced or provided next word is next phrase is sons of my stricken womb my here refers to mother india sons of mother india's sorrowful womb sorrowful because the sons born of her womb have been torn away from her bosom ruthlessly means cruelly to serve the british cause in the first world war so the indian soldiers fought for the british in the first world war they did not know why they were fighting they were just following the commands of their master that is the britishers next is drum beats of the duty it refers to the call to the indian soldiers who were duty bound to serve the british in their wars fought in foreign countries so the indian soldiers were fighting for the british in the first world war in foreign countries sabers it means long heavy swords with curved blades now let us see the next phrase sabers of doom it is a metaphorical expression signifying how war led to the ruin and death of the indian soldiers fighting for the british so here there is a term which is used that is metaphorical expression so children metaphor is a comparison between two things without using like or as whereas metaphorical expression actually does more heavy lifting than that by combining a metaphor with the real world or fact so that is why here it is used as metaphorical expression because it is combining the metaphor with the real world or fact now what is the fact the fact is that the war caused the ruin and death of the indian soldiers who were fighting for the british now let us start with the explanation of the poem now see the first two lines is there aught you need that my hands withhold 
rich gifts of raiment or grain or gold so the poem opens on an intense note as india is personified as compassionate and grieving mother who has just lost her brave sons who fought bravely for the british during the world war 1 the mother india asks a rhetorical question to emphasize now here mother india is asking a rhetorical question my here refers to mother india so mother india asks a rhetorical question from the british she asks to emphasize that is there anything that she has not given to the world she says that what has she given she has given world rich gifts of raiment that is clothes or food grains and precious thing like gold therefore she is asking that if she has denied any form of sacrifice to the world that was needed for a better tomorrow so in these two lines there are two important literary devices the first device is personification now what is personification children it is a figure of speech in which non human object are portrayed in such a way that we feel they have the ability to act like human beings so who has been personified mother india mother india is personified we have not seen mother india but she is given the attribute of mother that is why she is personified so the poet has used personification now next figure of speech used here is rhetorical question so these two lines is there aught you need that my hands withhold rich gifts of raiment or grain or gold is a rhetorical question now what is rhetorical question children it is a question asked in order to create a dramatic effect or to make a point rather than to get an answer so here the poet through mother india is not demanding any answer from the world or from the british it is actually laying stress on these two lines by creating a dramatic effect so let us see the next lines lo i have flung to the east and the west priceless treasures torn from my breast now she says that she has sent her priceless treasures now who are her priceless treasures children they are her brave indian soldiers so she says that she has sent her priceless treasure that is her brave indian sons to the countries of to the countries of the east such as persia and the west such as france and flanders flanders is the previous name of belgium and they were sent in which war they were sent in the first world war so here the poet has used a literary device named metaphor priceless treasures is a metaphor now what is metaphor children a figure of speech in which a comparison between two different things is implied but not clearly stated the indian soldiers are compared to priceless treasures torn from mother india's breast so priceless treasures are compared to brave indian soldiers so the poet has not used any as or like that is why it is a metaphor now let us see the next lines and yielded the sons of my stricken womb to the drum beats of duty the sabers of doom now what is the mother india saying in these lines she says that she has given up her sons born out of her womb to serve the british cause in the first world war now here she says the drum beats of duty it means that the drums were beaten to call the soldiers for their duty and sabers of doom it means swords of death and ruin which brings the horror of war that is the death of indian soldiers fighting for the british so mother india says that her sons heard the drum beats of duty and reached the valley of 
death that is the foreign lands where the indian soldiers were fighting for the british so here the poet has used literary device the drum beats of duty it is an auditory imagery now what is auditory imagery children it refers to the sounds that we hear we can imagine the sound of drum beats so that is why it is an auditory imagery now next literary device is sabers of doom it is a metaphor i have discussed with you in word meaning also sabers of doom is a metaphor moreover in meaning we have done that it is a metaphorical expression it is a metaphor for the weapons of war sabers we have discussed that these are the swords now doom it leads to their destruction so these are weapons of war which leads to the death of the indian soldiers fighting for the british so here we have to discuss one more symbolism now uh, just you have to go back to your first two lines the first line here sorry the second the second line rich gifts of raiment or grain or gold so children here gold is not only a metal but also symbolizes tradition tradition of india so gold has a symbolism so i hope that you are clear with the explanation of the first paragraph now let us read an explanation of the paragraph from your workbook mother india calls out to the british who have colonized india and asks if she has withheld any of her riches from them like garments grain or gold she exclaims that more than these worldly riches she has sacrificed to the east and the west the lives of her priceless indian sons she has given up the sons born out of her womb to serve the british cause in the first world war she says that the indian soldiers obeyed the call of duty and sacrificed their lives now let us discuss the word meanings of stanza 2 here i have taken lines 7 till 12 in stanza 2 so let us discuss the meanings first alien graves refers to indian soldiers graves in foreign lands such as in persia or egypt pale brows brows are yellow because they are dead brows here refers to forehead strewn it means scattered blossoms flowers especially of a fruit tree now let us see the next slide mown down destroyed or killed indiscriminately or in great number as troops in a battle indiscriminately means in a way that does not show careful choice troops refer to soldiers meadows usually flat areas of land that are covered with tall grass blood brown meadows meadows that have turned brown from the blood of the soldiers now let us discuss the stanza 2 but before discussing stanza 2 let me relate you with the background of the poem the poet writes about the fallen soldiers in foreign lands as we have read in the background that more than 1 million indian soldiers had served the british army in the world war 1 and around 70 and around 75000 of them were dead the mother india laments the loss of soldiers in this stanza now let us start with the explanation of the stanza gathered like pearls in their alien graves silent they sleep by the persian waves now first line gathered like pearls in their alien graves now what is mother india saying here mother india's soft and tender feelings for her brave soldiers are seen through the words like pearls she refers her brave sons to pearls in oysters through the simile she compares the dead soldiers lying in graves in foreign lands to beautiful pearls in 
oysters. So in this line, the poet has used simile. What are similes? It is a figure of speech in which a likeness between two different things is stated in an explicit way. Explicit means clear using words as or like. It means that the dead bodies of Indian soldiers in their graves are compared to pearls in their shells. So, gathered like pearls. So, who are gathered like pearls? The dead bodies of Indian soldiers. And where are they lying? In the alien graves. Means in the graves of foreign land. Now the second line children. Silent they sleep by the Persian waves. So some of the dead bodies are buried by the shores of Persia. That is Iran. Persia was the previous name of Iran. So here the figure of speech used by the poet is alliteration. See, S and S, repetition of the consonant sound. Now, what is alliteration? It is a close repetition of consonant sounds, usually in the beginning of the words. So, here the alliteration is S of silent and S of sleep. Now, let us see the next line. Scattered like shells on Egyptian sand. Now, here she says, she here refers to Mother India. That some dead bodies are scattered like broken shells on Egyptian sands. See the condition of Indian soldiers. First, they were gathered like pearls in the alien grave. They were buried together. Now some dead bodies are lying by the Persian waves. And some are scattered like shells where they are scattered on the Egyptian sands. So here the poet has used simile. And alliteration. Similarly, I have discussed with you children what is simile? Comparison between two different things by using word as or like. So, dead bodies of Indian soldiers were scattered like broken shells on Egyptian sands. And the another literary device used here is alliteration. S of scattered and S of shells and S of sands. They are repeated. The consonant sound is repeated. That is why it is an alliteration. Now let us see the next lines. They lie with pale brows and brave broken hands. They are strewn like blossoms, mown down by chance on the blood brown meadows of Flanders and France. So here, what does the mother India say? She laments that the dead Indian soldiers are lying with pale foreheads Pale, which are yellow because they are dead. So the dead bodies of Indian soldiers are lying with pale foreheads and broken hands. Their bodies are scattered like flowers, strewn like blossoms. Strewn children, we, I have discussed with you the meaning. Strewn means scattered and blossoms means flowers. So their bodies are scattered like flowers which have been trimmed by chance in the grassy lands. Of Flanders and France. So what is the new name of Flanders? It is Belgium. Which have turned red with their blood. So the grassy land has turned red with the blood of dead Indian soldiers. So which figure of speech has been used here by the poet? The first is alliteration. B of brows, B of brave and B of broken. So this consonant sound is repeated. The another figure of speech used in the line, they are strewn like blossoms mown down by chance, is simile. The dead bodies of Indian soldiers are scattered like flowers. So children, the poet has used three similes to describe the soldiers. The similes which he used are pearls, shells and blossoms. The choice of such comparison highlights the qualities of her sons. That is, they are Precious, fragile means delicate and innocent. Whereas the words like, see the words like gathered, scattered and strewn capture the negligence with which the bodies of dead soldiers has been treated.
So in this stanza, Mother India laments the loss of the lives of her beloved sons, that is, the Indian soldiers who were sent to foreign countries by the British to fight for them. Now let us see the next slide. Gathered like pearls till Flanders and France. These lines represent one other literary device that is visual imagery. Now what is visual imagery children? It is a poetic imagery in which the poet appeals to the reader's sense of sight by describing something the speaker or narrator of the poem sees. It may include colors, brightness, shapes, sizes and patterns. To provide readers with visual imagery, poets often use metaphor, simile or personification in their description. So we can visualize this scene before our eyes. That is why it is a visual imagery. The image of dead Indian soldiers is highly visual and pathetic. In this stanza, the poet has used color imagery. Mentioning of the colors in the poem refers to the color imagery. In this stanza, she has used words like pearls, pale brows, blossoms, meadows of Flanders and France have turned blood brown. So these all words represent color imagery. Now let us see the explanation of this stanza. Mother India laments the loss of the lives of her beloved sons that is the Indian soldiers who were sent to foreign countries by the British to fight for them. Laments means a song, poem or other expression of sadness for somebody who has died or for something that has ended. She alludes to Persia, Egypt, Flanders and France, the specific lands wherein the Indian soldiers were sent to war by the British. Persia, now Iran, Flanders, now Belgium. The Indian soldiers who fought for the Allies during the First World War never came back home. And like pearls, the lifeless soldiers like buried in graves in alien lands, some of them sleep silently along the shores in Persia, while others are scattered like broken shells on Egyptian sands. Still, other brave Indian soldiers with pale brows and broken hands lie scattered like flowers on the blood-brown meadows of Flanders and France. It means that the soldiers were bleeding so much that even the fields were colored by their blood. The meaning of the word allies is a country that has an agreement to support another country, especially in a war. Flanders is the previous name of Belgium. I hope that explanation of stanza 2 is clear to you with its literary device. Now come to stanza 3. Stanza 3 is from lines 13 to 18. Now let us discuss its word meaning. Ye means you. Compass means comprehend. Wo, a feeling of great pain or sadness. Anguish of prayer, prayer in her heart while praying. Now, next slide. Sad glorious vision refers to her vision of true freedom which India would attain from the British. But it is sad because it would also result in loss of the lives of many Indian soldiers. So that is why she is saying the vision which is glorious. It is full of glory but it is sad. The figure of speech related to it we will do in explanation. Torn red banners of victory. Victory gained at the cost of Indian soldiers blood. Now let us discuss the explanation. Can ye measure the grief of the tears I weep or compass the woe of the watch I keep? So here the mother India asks a rhetorical question from other nations that whether they can measure the grief that she feels or tears that she weeps for whom? For her dead Indian soldiers or compass the woe of the watch I keep. She again asks a question that if they can calculate the sorrow of the watchful eyes that are, wo that are waiting for her children. Now who are her children? Her children here refer to Indian soldiers who had gone to fight for the 
British in which war during the World War One. So the figure of speech used here is rhetorical question, which I have discussed with you earlier. Or the pride that thrills through my heart's despair, and the hope that comforts the anguish of prayer. So children here, Mother India says that even though she is grief stricken, why is she grief stricken? On the death of her brave Indian soldier, but she has a sense of pride. offered by the soldiers which overpowers the hopelessness despair means hopelessness of her heart and she asks them whether they can experience the hope that she feels while praying for the safety of her children now let us see the next two lines and the far sad glorious vision i see of the torn red banners of victory so the word vision here refers to something that you imagine so the poet here is hoping to her vision of true freedom which india would attain from the british but it is sad because it would also result in loss of lives of many indian soldiers it is signified by the word banner and for that victory she feels glorious but at the same time she feels sad for the soldiers who were going to die for the cause as signified by the banners being torn and colored by blood so children the color red signifies here the color imagery sad glorious vision the literary device used here is oxymoron oxymoron is a figure of speech in which apparently contradictory terms appear in conjunction see children glorious full of glory but the glory is come with sadness so these are two opposite term that is why it is known as oxymoron there is one more figure of speech in this paragraph or compass the woe or the pride that thrills and the hope that comforts and the far sad glorious so here you can see the repetition of word or and and so this figure of speech is known as anaphora anaphora is a technique of repeating the words at the beginning of consecutive line so in order to make reader feels the emotion the poet has used these words repeatedly in the beginning and which figure of speech it is it is anaphora now let us see the explanation of lines 13 to 18 mother india rhetorically puts forward the question whether anyone can measure the grief she has at the loss of her martyred sons the grief tears her apart but at the same time the pride at her son's heroism overwhelms her despair she bears immeasurable pain in giving away her dead sons to the colonizers demand so who are colonizers here the british the british they make colonies and then set up their rule but she hopes that this pain in her heart while she prays would be accepted and one day hate and terror will come to an end and this comforts her the poet sarojini naidu is here hoping that a successful war of independence would be waged by the indian against the british as signified by the word banner and for which she feels glorious but at the same time she feels sad for the soldiers who were going to die for the cause as signified by the banners being torn and colored red and colored by blood hope that in this session you are clear with the explanation of the stanza 1 2 and 3 with its literary device so children you have to revise your poem thoroughly so that you can quote important lines your homework is to write question 1b sarojini naidu's the gift of india can be read as an anti war poem do you agree why you have to elaborate your answer by using the hints given below literature has glorified war but this poem is different here war is not glorified but condemned 
द गिफ्ट ऑफ इंडिया ब्रिंग्स आउट द हॉरर्स ऑफ फर्स्ट वर्ल्ड वॉर वॉर इज ट्रेजिक एंड डेडली पोट्रियल ऑफ मदर इंडिया इज ग्रीव एट द लॉस ऑफ अर वेलियन सन्स इन द फर्स्ट वर्ल्ड वॉर द हॉरिफिक इमेज ऑफ डेड इंडियन सोल्जर्स इन एलियन लैंड सो आई विल कंटिन्यू द एक्सप्लेनेशन इन द नेक्स्ट सेशन थैंक यू